What up y'all? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be doing a live well retrofit into my Bass Tractor Classic XL. As you're familiar with the boat, if you're watching this channel, you probably own one. We only have a nine gallon live well, which is okay if you're avid fishing, but if you're fishing tournaments, it ain't going to hold more than about two giants, maybe, comfortably. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing in a 16 gallon live well, adding some upgrades into it uh, and figuring out the logistics of where things need to go, where things need to be routed. We're going to be adding a, uh, a recirc pump, a recirculation slash pump out combo valve, a uh, standard aerator, a drain out and an overflow as well as a live well timer. So the overall goal here is to emulate the setup on the larger bass trackers. People are pretty satisfied with them. Why reinvent the wheel, right? So this puts me in a bit of a unique situation and you as well if you want to do the upgrade. You and I will both get the opportunity to do a lot of the mock-ups, do a lot of the install prior to actually putting in the well into the boat. Um, this is really helpful because it kind of helps you envision exactly where things need to be cut, where things need to be. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly where things need to go and what's needed to do a successful live well conversion. Aside from that, let's do it. Let's go. All right. Things required for this retrofit are actually pretty simple. You're going to need a preferably 800 gallon per hour pump. This is made by Shoreline Marine. Doesn't have to be exact. Um, a lot of the stuff is already modified, so it's ready to go. You're gonna need a flow right pump out aerator combo valve. This particular one is the MP1200. Some hoses. Uh, this is not exactly true to the project. This is just going to be for mock-up purposes. Three-quarter hose right here, and then you may need one and one-eighth uh, bilge hose. Your standard aerator. This is from the Bass Tracker itself. A drain. This is also from the Bass Tracker itself. As you can see... It is the screw inversion 90 degree. A couple quick lock connectors. This is gonna be a three quarter inch clamp. This is a set of six. One and one eighth inch clamps. This is a set of 10. A mesh screen. This is gonna be for the pump itself. Uh, now the sizing will vary a little bit based on what you get. This particular one is a 1 1 8 inch uh, hole saw. This is a 1 and a half inch hole saw. And a cordless drill or a drill that is corded. Outside of that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. This is the 16 gallon live well. It measures 37 inches wide. Can fit plenty of giants in here. Comes with a divider. I actually had to trim this down to size. It was not exact. And here is a setup of the holes I already drilled. They're all the same size. They're all just a hair larger than the actual fittings themselves, but that's okay. We have rubber gaskets and sealant to make up for some of that slack and it allows us a little bit of wiggle room in positioning the valves exactly how we want them. So let's go ahead, we'll get started installing things, and then we will decide, as you can see, that says drain on there. Still trying to decide if I wanna drain out of there or if I wanna drain out of there and determine exactly where I'm going to run the drain outs as well as the overflow. Let's go ahead and get started mocking up some things. So in order to facilitate this install and make things a little bit more expedient, I went ahead, pre-drilled the holes. 
Now, before I get started, I believe I definitely measured from the start of this ridge here, this rib. And I measured out two inches for each side. Yeah, roughly about two inches. So go ahead and take your valve that you stole off of your, your old Bass Tracker live well. This particular one is made by TH Marine. Keep the nut off of it for now. Leave this gasket as is intact. And go ahead and install. Before I do that, as a stencil, take the, the old nut and go ahead and trace it exactly where you want to where you want to cut so with that being said let's go ahead and install this Okay, we're all set to go there. Now that your aerator nozzle is in place, you can flip-flop. You could actually switch the position of the valves if you so desire. The way I want to run it is going to be exactly like I'm showing you. So you're going to take your flow right valve, go ahead and unscrew it from the front, take this out, Spin the front nut out only. Bring it into the back. This does not have a rubber gasket, so I will be applying sealant to it. Like I said, this is mock-ups. This is just to see how things are gonna look. pretty tight by hand. Get it positioned how you want. And then you're gonna go ahead and take this front section of the valve, push that in. thread it on. Boom, good to go. So next up we're going to be installing the recirc pump as so through that hole. I have it all rigged up already, ready to go. This came with a long stem. I cut it off already. I will show you exactly what you need to do. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this installed. Okay, leave this rubber gasket in place. And then go ahead and install. as tight as possible. And 
then position the pump from the back. And you're set there. Once you're done with that, go ahead and thread in your screen. Actually, before I do that, I went ahead and cut the stem and left about a about one inches worth of extra stem. So now that I'm good to go there. Go. All right, mock-up is getting underway. Recirc pump, aerator valve, which will be hooked up to the pump already in place on the boat. Recirc pump slash pump out nozzle combo. And finally, Go ahead and install this divider. And we're starting to look like a really nice live well in there. So moving forward, we're gonna go ahead and rig up these hoses just to see how things are looking once they're mocked up. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up this hose this is about 24 inches of clear PVC vinyl tubing. Go ahead and slip that over that barb. And then you're going to run it to the first barb right there. And you're going to wind up looking something like this. Once you got that in place, go ahead and take your three quarter inch fittings, or your, uh, I'm sorry, your, your clamps. Go ahead and slip it over the hose. one and then go ahead and take another one and slip it over the pump and you're looking good there then you go ahead and take another three-quarter hose And this will be to the pump out function. Again, this is for mock up purposes. This may run out a different way, whatever the case might be. And then this is a visual representation of the hose that runs from the pump that's already on the boat. As a whole, you are good to go. And then you'll need to wire it up, of course, but that will be secondary. All right, y'all. So next up, you gotta remove the overflow, the drain down here, and the aerator nozzle and the fittings and hoses related to them. Now, um, I actually found that this hose here is insanely easy to access in the middle. It's gonna be located by the drain. I'll show you where it is in a second. But I went ahead, got a, a straight adapter, 
because what I plan to do is tap into the side exit, the side exit on the side of the boat for the drain out functions. This should actually be really easy to get to and there's an access right here. So I just need to fish this out of here. And then once I do, I'll be able to have access to the actual hose itself to hook up to the main aerator nozzle. So next you're gonna to wanna to cut out some slots on the compartment. You're gonna to need to cut two slots. One's gonna be for the aerator. I'm sorry, for the recirc pump. This slot right here, I measured out to be about, you could do five by five inch. Uh, mine is like five and a half by five. And then this this slot right here is about, uh, what was it? 14 and a quarter by three and a quarter. So, yeah, like I said, it's about, yeah, about three and a quarter by, about 14 and a quarter. So these slots here, like I said, that'll be for the pump and that'll be for the nozzles, the overflow and the pump out nozzle as well. And then what we're gonna have to do, we'll have to cut some access holes down here, uh, but it should be easy to get to, it should be insanely easy to get to after that. And this part's a little unreal. I had to remove the, the third seat that I have here. You can see the outline literally. Take out three screws and then you can remove that screen. This is crazy, a little bit lazy. You could actually see the, the hose here for the aerator nozzle. So I could actually technically start fishing it out and attach my bilge to it as well. Then once I have my my access hole here then I'll just be able to fish it out from down here and just bring it up and hook it up to my drain out and then hook that up to my my overflow which will be right here okay next up we got our drain hole I decided to make it in the middle actually and so I end up using what was it a one and a half inch hole saw. I think a one and three eighth inch will work just fine, but um, I'd, I'd rather have it a little bit larger than have to deal with a smaller hole and then trying to widen it later. But anyways, so we're getting to the point where that we're going to be starting install. So I am going to be installing the drain right now and permanently mounting it. So what we got here is the actual riser board that the live well is going to sit on top of. This is a mix between PVC board and actual just uh, a styrofoam board. So I went ahead and made, I made a slot for the empty space that the well sits on so it sits flush. And then this right here is the channel where the drain is going to sit in. So after I put this together, I have to aim the drain so it exits out that way. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Before I get too far ahead of myself here, I wanna go ahead and give you guys some of the dimensions of this stuff. So you know. So this is gonna be a, a three, yep, 36 inches by, oops, sorry about that by uh, 12 inches. So this is this is PVC vinyl um, board. I picked this up online. I'll post a link to where you can find it. You don't have to get this exactly. You could just do styrofoam. Um, I only got it for its mold and mildew resistant features. Obviously this is PVC. Uh, the stuff doesn't rot out. So this right here is gonna be possibly the base above 
the, the live well itself. So even if water happens to intrude and get past and gets down all up in here, it still has a solid PVC base to rest on. And this is obviously cut the same, the same exact length as the PVC board. So it's, it's 36 by, by 12. Um, and then this channel right here, you just kind of have to, this is kind of a fitment thing. I can't really explain too much of it here, but as far as the cut itself goes, it's, it's probably a good 10 and three quarters. So going this way, taking the angle it did, it's about 10 and three quarters. So it takes up a pretty good majority of cut on the board itself. But anyways, uh, this is just, this is just something that you'll have to figure out on your own. And same goes for this. This is a, uh, yeah, three and three quarters by, uh, yeah, by about three inches. So it's a three and three quarter by three inch, just regular square. And this is for that dead section in the live well that is not gonna be used. But again, this is just something you'll have to fit up and mock up yourself. I can't really give you an explanation as to where exactly it needs to be, where it needs to be located, because everything kind of has its own angle and exit out. And we've reached the point where we're gonna be installing the drain. So, take your drain as so. Feed it through. Okay, then we'll get a shot of the other side here. So you got your drain all through. So we're gonna take this nut here and we're gonna take, this is a Loctite PL. Get the cap off of it and then we're gonna go ahead and seal this up. All right, so your drain is in, and what we want to do is pre-rig the drain so it's just a relatively drop-in setup, and we don't have to mess with it once it's in. So you're going to take about you're going to take about 12 inches or a foot section of um, one and one eighth inch hose. Get a get a um, clamp for it like a worm drive style. And then go ahead and make sure that's lined up properly and then tighten. And make sure you get that nice and tight because you want the setup to be permanent. You don't want to sit there and have to pull out the well, fix things, put it back in. It's just a real pain. So you want to make sure that whatever you do is set up in such a way where it's, it's permanent and won't require any, any tampering later on. Okay, and it looks good. Doesn't spin. Give it one last tighten and we are good. All right. And so now as you can see, this hose protrudes out through the channel or section that I cut out of all these boards. And uh, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna hook this up to the overflow up here. It's gonna sit like so. You can, you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. And then and then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna rig this T that I stole off of the, the, the boat itself that was already in place. And this hose was already a, a part of the boat as well. So this is gonna hook up like so. This is gonna be the overflow hose. It's gonna hook up to this bottom one right here. And then this bottom right here is gonna hook up to the actual drain out on the side of the boat. So after it's all set up, it'll be a really seamless, integrated uh, setup. 
So this is another shot of the styrofoam. Now this is, this entire thing is gonna be on the front of the hatch. So basically this is, this is like a spacer for the live well and you're gonna need to cut it. You could just use a standard, you know, serrated knife. This is 36 inches by, by about 13 inches. And this guy right here, this is gonna be um, the side spacers. This is just as important as the front because the well needs a proper place to rest in, obviously. So measurements for this, it's gonna be about 15 inches by, by about 13 inches. So like I said, this, this board, if you could picture it, it's gonna sit like that. And then these are the surrounding layers to it. And then the well basically just plops right up in there. So you end up needing about, this is a two inch board. You end up needing another two inches in front of that. It winds up being giving the well the spacing it needs in order to house it properly within the hatch. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start lining the interior again. So you're gonna take this and place like so. This is a, now this is a tight fit for me, so. And just like that, it's in. And then you'll go ahead and take your giant board and you will place this right in front. lined up for the moment. Okay, so I went ahead and mounted the, the baseboards. So we'll go ahead and throw in the well now and then we have to we have to do a quick height check, but here's everything insulated as it should be. And once the well sits in there it should sit in there nice and flush with the rest of this. All right, I got this well pretty much inserted. So this is a tight fit coming in. So you just literally push down. And that should take care of all of that. Now this does sit high. But we have to check exactly where we're at here. So we'll see in a second. All right, I decided I'm gonna be mounting things a different way. So I actually, right above this slot here, and this was just something that you have to measure based upon the board that'll sit right here. Um, I went ahead and drilled a two and a quarter inch hole. I literally just drilled it. And uh, that's gonna serve as a routing for the drain hose. And what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm actually gonna drill a hole or rather a slot right down there, and then I'm gonna run my hoses that way, just to make everything a little easier and streamline it all. All right, so I got this rod pretty much how I want to, and it's all solidly mounted and actually ready to roll almost. So I ended up cutting some of the excess hose I had for my drain um, to make a longer run right here. The hose I was gonna use for my tracker wasn't gonna work. So I actually wound up running the drain from here and I'm gonna make a new through hole fitting right about here, if you can see that. And then I went ahead and pulled out the old hose for my fill and got it routed right there. And then here's my flow right, here's my pump. Still need to run the wiring for it. And then the pump out hose is actually gonna come out right about. One more thing, for the hole down here, I used a four inch hole saw. And for the exit hole, 
For the exit hole right there, for the drain hose, I used a two and a quarter inch hole saw. You could use whatever size you want, but for this, I recommend either a three or a four inch hole saw. For that, you, you want to drill bigger than smaller for obvious reasons. You just don't want any chafing or to deal with any chafing like that. Okay, I need to address the live well drain or exit inside beneath the console. So what I wound up doing was I went to Ace Hardware and I picked up this one inch barbed PVC adapter and then this one inch uh, threaded plug also from Ace. Um, and this is PVC as well. This is meant to fit to this. And what I wound up doing, because this hose is one and one eighth inch and this is one inch, it was still somewhat of a loose fit, so I had to run this clamp on it. It still wasn't gonna be enough to seal it. So what I did was I ran some Loctite PL right here, right here, all the way to here. Put a, uh, or I laid down a, a nice, nice bead all around the circumference of the barb. And then I laid uh, a bead of it out here as well, just to ensure it was gonna be leak free. And then I also laid a bead down all around the threading. What I did after that was I water tested it from the outside in. I shot water from a hose and then I just kind of almost gave it like a mini pressure test. And it was leak free, it was no problems. So because I wasn't able to run it to the back of the boat, I had to plug it up somehow and this was the best solution to do so. Got the live well timer installed. This is made by Leisure Electronics. The way it's designed to work is you get one minute off, one minute on, three minutes off, one minute on, and seven minutes off, one minute on, and then you also have a continuous run cycle. Not sure if you can hear that, but it is working. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna wire this up differently based off of how you want to run it. I'm gonna show you real quick what mine looks like and that might help you out hooking it up so it's in there so the way it works is you need to hook up to a negative I just wound up hooking into that uh, distribution block inside of the console so that was an easy ground and then I ran a power to the battery and then you have to run the signal to the pump itself, hence the three wires. I'll show a diagram of the setup here in a second, but like I said, you're gonna run it however you deem necessary. You can hook into the ignition switch. I hooked into the battery, but for what it is, the thing works awesome. This is gonna be a really nice setup. So if you're to this portion of the video, we're approaching the end actually of this build. So what I did was this splash guard, I actually had manufactured for me. I had it cut out and stuff over at a local uh, metal shop just cause it, it made things easier for me. I didn't, I could have done the cuts myself, but I wanted them to be nice and straight and even. I had to do very small finishing work to it. Um, just sand down the inside edges right here, just to make sure they were dull. Um, and just some little minor touches. I had to make this hole here for the locking cam. And then I laid down, what I did was it was meant to fit pretty much almost flush. along the entire storage compartment. And then what I did after that was I laid down all around on the inside right here on the, the lip of the live well, I laid down some um, EPDM foam to kind of serve as like a, a riser slash gasket to prevent water from entering. I'm not sure if you can see it in this angle. You probably could, I'm not sure. Uh, but once I lay down these rivets, I laid down uh, approximately 16 of them. Boom, 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 boom. 
then what happens once you lay down the rivets it compresses the gasket and makes it leak free and then after that just to finish it off I laid down some of this this uh, edge guard or you can call it trim lock uh, this is actually from taco marine and this splash guard was manufactured from 1 16th inch aluminum and then I made this hole using a combination of hole saws I think I used like a one inch hole saw that's what it was yeah and then I made two holes and then I used a jigsaw to kind of clean it up some sandpaper but uh, yeah as you can see it, it wound up working pretty well I've ran this setup already and it seems to work really good really really good and as you can see once I close the hatch close it's nice and flush no issues there and uh, almost serves as like a reinforcement in general for the area so that takes care of that and then we're gonna move on to the pump out nozzle fitting and the drain fitting now and then once we do we'll be just about complete with this project one small footnote I have to make a mention to which I did not make a mention to anywhere previously in the video is you're gonna want to make sure you leak test the slive well outside of the boat prior to installing it or if you're gonna leak test it while it's installed then make sure none of the fittings are in place and if they are make sure they're not sealed up screwed down like i said it would just be easier to leak test this thing outside of the boat itself and just uh especially the drain right here so what i had to wind up doing was i had to double seal it using two different types of silicone i used a uh, loctite pl initially to seal the threads uh, and I, I was very generous on the beading that i needed to use it and then after that i topped the surface of it right here the entire circumference of it with some uh, rtv clear silicone which is marine rated so yeah i i cannot stress it enough you do not want a leaking live well post install because then you have to pull everything back out reseal it make sure everything's good so leak test leak test leak test i cannot stress the importance of that enough so here's the pump out nozzle and here's the drain nozzle that i did for the live well the new drain nozzle apologize about that for the moment i'm going to delve into this right here the pump out nozzle uh what I did was I took a three quarter bit and then just marked and measured exactly where I wanted it to be. I wanted it to run along the, like right beneath where the actual hatch sits. And then I ran the hose here back, all the way back here. And then ultimately, I'm sorry, I already have all this stuff installed but I ultimately ran it all the way back about there. And then what I did was I went to Home Depot and I picked up some of these um, hose clamps, electronic tie down clamps, whatever you want to call them. I picked them up in about one inch and then I just kind of uh, saw exactly where I wanted to run it. This, these are just placeholders, just keeps everything in place, the hose from moving out, as you can see. And then after I had everything all set up, then I went ahead, clamped everything down, tightened it down, ran some 5200 PL, front and back, as you can see. And after that, we're good to go. All done with that pump out nozzle valve fitting. Okay, the new live well drain was somewhat tricky, not because of the front right here, but because of inside. Tightening it up actually wound up being quite a project. So what I did was I took a 
what was it? I believe it was a one and three eighth inch bit. Hole saw, of course. And then uh, I went ahead, marked and measured my hole exactly where I wanted it to be. I kind of duplicated what was similar to the 175 TXWs. As you saw when I first started recording this portion of the video. And then I, um, I went ahead and just made my hole. And then I had to tighten this nut. So I ran 5200 PL um, inside and outside similar to the pump out valve. And getting some pliers in here to tighten that up was a real bear. After that was done, I went ahead and hooked up my hose as I needed to, ran my clamp, and as you can see, nice and solid, really isn't going anywhere. And then that runs all the way up to that general drain right there. And with that, I actually believe we are all done with this project. And as you can see, there's not really much evidence that anything outside of the ordinary shouldn't be there. It, it all looks like it belongs at this point, pretty much. Not much to it. So without further ado, I present to you the new live well in action. So, let's take a final look at this. 16 gallon live well. All sealed up, all nice. Does not get in your way, none of that. And finally, the nine gallon live well turns into dry storage entirely. There's nothing left there which will leak. So, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. This has been a hell of a journey. It really has been quite the interesting journey. But, anywho, I wish you guys the best rest of your day. Like and comment, subscribe if you have any questions, whatever. I know it's a big project and I know some of you will not want to do it just based on the premise of the work involved to do it. But for those of you who do want to do it, feel free to ask me some questions. I have plenty of knowledge on this. Obviously, I did it firsthand. So, anywho, guys, take care and I'll see you next time.